Hello, Men's Fraternity. It's great to be here with you all again today. We are continuing our study through biblical manhood. We have been looking at the character of Adam in the Bible. He was the first man created, and in him we see a lot of failures that we as men need to look out for and be aware of. Uh, the first thing was that he was passive. He didn't stand up to sin when it crept into their lives. He let Eve go into sin, and then he joined her. The next thing is that he didn't take responsibility either as a man. He, I don't know what all that entailed on his part, but obviously he didn't do a good job of passing along God's commands to Eve. So the sin has crept into creation and it all started with Adam failing in his responsibility as a man. So as we've been looking at Adam, we have also been looking at the character of Christ. Son of God, the, as Scripture calls him, the new and better Adam. We, we see his successes. We see the example that he has set forth as a man that we should be following. So we need to reject passivity. That's the first thing that we need to reject as a man. The next thing that we need to do is accept responsibility. Now, in Jesus... We see an example of leading courageously, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, is leading courageously as men in our homes. Now, when we look at his example of how he led with his disciples, we see three primary things that he has done. The first thing is that he set a direction for his disciples. You know, whenever he called his disciples, he didn't just, you know, say, listen to me, and that was it. He said, follow me. Jesus knew where he was going. He knew what he wanted to accomplish. He knew where he wanted to lead his disciples. So he told them to follow him. And the disciples did. The next thing is he provided protection. How did Jesus describe himself? He described him as the good shepherd. He said that I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for my sheep. And he did that. He protected us from the consequences of our sin by laying down his life for our sins, for our mistakes. Those are consequences he didn't want us to bear. So he threw himself in front of the consequences of our sin and bore our iniquities at the cross. So that's what he did as a good shepherd to provide protection for us. And the next thing, he made provision. It says that he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. That's something that we could not provide for ourselves. And Jesus knew that. So we needed a good shepherd, a great provider that was going to come and provide these things for us. And we see these three things. And this really mirrors what we need to be doing as men in the home. When we lead courageously, this is the example that we need to follow. Now, we look at these things, you know, um, providing protection. I, I can't think of a lot of instances where... Um, I'm going to have to be crucified for my wife. I can't think of any ways where I can provide abundant life, where I can provide eternal life for my family. So how do these principles apply to our marriage and our position as a spiritual leader in the home? Well, go ahead and turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to be in verse 22. See, Paul lays out a really good picture of what the marriage is supposed to look like. And he does that by comparing the relationship between Christ and his bride, the church. Because ultimately, that is why God has designed marriage the way that he's designed it. He's designed it to reflect the church and its relationship with Christ. So let's start in verse 22. Uh, we're going to read through verse 24. It says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, because the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is head of the church. So again, we see that comparison between Christ and the church and husband and wife. Now, as uh, he is the Savior of the body, and now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives are to submit to their husbands in everything. All right, so the command in this section here was given to the wife and that command was to submit to your husband as unto the Lord. And again, that was to mirror what the church does to Christ. The, the church submits to Christ. 
Now, this isn't a, um, a type of submission that makes the woman subservient to the man. It's not that the man, is any, the man, as in us, is any less sinful than the wife. We all have our struggles that we deal with. But the position of spiritual authority, the position of spiritual leadership has been given to the man. Ultimately, one day, we are going to have to answer to God for how we led our family. Did we lead them to love Christ? Did we lead them to serve the Lord? Or were we passive? Did we not take responsibility for them? These are things that we're going to have to answer for someday. And that has been given to the man, not to the woman. So we go on um, with the woman submitting to the man. Biblically, what can the woman expect from the man in in response for her trust and her submission to the man of the household? Well, let's go on to verse 25. This command is given to the husband now. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And we're going to hang our hats on that command here in just a minute. But let's finish up this passage. To make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of water by the word. He did this to present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or anything like that, but holy and blameless. So just to sum this up, in verse 28 it says, In the same way husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own flesh, but provides and cares for it, just as Christ does for the church. Men, we have been given just... A huge command that we in and of ourselves do not have the power to do. And that is to love our wives as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? What did that love look like? Well, just to give you an example, Christ died for the church. He laid himself down for the church. And and let me just paint this picture for you. The church that Christ died for at the time when he died... They were not mourning and grieving for him as he went to the cross. Think about this. The people that he died for, his disciples, they had abandoned him. The people that were along the roadside cheering for his crucifixion, they were one day going to become the church. But at this point in time, they were cheering for his death. But Christ still laid himself down and died for those people that would one day become the church. And and why did he do this? He did this, as it says in verse 27, he did this to present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or anything like that, but holy and blameless. So these people that were once cheering for Christ's crucifixion, he knew that one day he was going to be able to present them to himself holy, spotless, and blameless as his bride, as the church. Do we have the ability to love our wives like that, to love our families like that by ourselves? No, we don't. If we are depending on our own strength, if we are depending on our own emotional fortitude, we don't have that kind of love in and of ourselves. But thankfully, thankfully Christ has given us His righteousness He has given us His Spirit to dwell inside us that we can depend on, that we can rest on, so that we can fulfill this type of mandate for our family, so that we can love them as Christ loved the church, because that is the image that we are made in. We are made in the image of Christ. And as men of the household, as the spiritual leaders, it is our job to represent Christ to our families to be that image bearer for them to follow. So men, I just want to leave you with that. Lead courageously. And we lead courageously by bearing the image of Christ in the way that we love, in the way that we provide, and in the way that we protect. Enjoy the rest of your time together as you discuss today's lesson.